Have you ever wanted to be an airship merchant that does trading in the sky? Well, that's this game, and it's not in early access anymore. Merchant of the Skies is a chill trading and light management game that I covered last July when it first came out in early access, and now nine months later, it's fully released. I'll be sure to get some comparisons to the early access version later, but for now, let's get into that gameplay loop. The main campaign mode has you start as a fresh airship pilot at your uncle's post office. He tells you to recharge your airship with storm energy and deliver a letter. He also says you can buy some wood at the trade post and sell it at the destination to make a profit. Boom! That's the game. Recharging, getting quests, and trading stuff. When you leave the island, you get a world map of randomly generated sky islands. And whenever you start sailing, time passes on this weird clock where the different days are different colors symbols. Hey Mike, you're gonna be there tomorrow to get the new shipment of apples? Oh, you didn't hear? We, uh, moved that delivery to Green Day. Dookie, you also gotta worry about fuel because if you run out, you get towed and that can be pretty darn expensive. There's recharge stations on many islands, but the price per unit of zap varies, and you darn sure don't want to be paying five gold per unit. That's just airway robbery at that point. You deliver the letter to the guild hall, which is where you'll be getting the majority of quests in this game. Not this specific guild hall, but just guild halls in general. They're everywhere. They usually want you to get some kind of material and bring it back to them, or sometimes take it somewhere else. Doing quests gives you money and also gives you guild tickets, which you can use for special upgrades or reducing taxes during trading. The trade posts are where you buy and sell stuff, but you can't just sell anything. You have to sell what a trade post accepts, and every trade post accepts different things and values them at a fixed rate. Some islands really like sand, some islands really like apples, and some islands really like fancy jewels that they can't afford. Trading with posts levels them up so they have more materials and more money so you can keep selling them higher and higher amounts of dye until you're making almost 5,000 a drop! That's that money, man! Speaking of leveling up, you can level up too at a special island and get you some small stat bonuses. Woo! You can also buy upgrades for your ship, or just buy a better ship. That's kind of like leveling up. The ships have different stats. I picked the one that goes the fastest. It's the best ship. Don't at me. If you don't want to go halfway across the map to get some cheap sand, you can buy blank resource islands and build stuff on them and get the resources yourself. You'll need to buy workers and take them to the island, but that's a lot less expensive in the long run than buying the fuel and the materials. You can also build artisan buildings to process resources into finer materials that you'll need on quests in the main objectives. Wood into lumber, sand into glass, glass into bottle, bottle and apple into apple juice. You know, essentials. Eventually, you're able to make a caravan trade route from island to island so you don't have to do anything. Just set it up and reap the profits, my friends. Le Mal. There's a bit of story and lore that involves helping a bunch of people out to uncover the secrets of the land. I don't want to spoil it, but there's a good bit about a legendary adventurer named Gret. Gret? Um... The only way you can lose the game is if you run out of money. Wait, no, the bank bails you out and you have to repay them. Oh no, debt! That's not fun at all! Wait, there's no interest. If you run out of money and you're in debt, you lose. It's not that hard to not run out of money though. Just, uh, don't spend it all and have the week roll over where you need to pay your crew and workers. <laughs> if you're not in debt though and you got money in the bank, you're getting that god dang daily interest. Yeah, that's right, daily. There's also a plot of land you can buy and you can build a mansion on it. Uh-huh. Yep. Mmm, perfect. And if you're too poor to make a mansion, you can always do it on sandbox mode. And that's basically the game. Man, this game has improved a lot since the beginning of Early Access. I finished the Early Access campaign type mode in about two and a half hours, and the finished version took me about nine. There's definitely a lot more to do. The map is much bigger, there's more quest types, there's some story and lore bits in there, and there's way more variety in the ships. In Early Access, the ships were just a straight line of upgrades where the next one was better in every way than the one before it. But now, there's ships that cost roughly the same amount of money that do wildly different things. 
The UI was also kind of frustrating in early access and it's definitely better than it was then. There also wasn't any kind of supply and demand for goods in the early access version and now there kind of is because trade posts only have so much money whereas before they just had infinite. You'll need to level the posts up by consistently trading with them if you actually want to make any real money. Towards the end of my game, I was sitting on a buttload of gems with nothing to do with them because all the islands that value gems were just too poor to buy them from me. First island problems, mate. In early access, I also found trading to be less worthwhile than stockpiling resources and spamming quest turn-ins, and I definitely couldn't do that in the full release. The quests ramped up pretty fast and I mostly relied on trade and dies. There was, however, one thing that was not fixed from early access. For some reason, you can't trade artisan materials with anyone. Hey, you want some wood? Yeah, I'll buy it. Tree video pop- Hey, wait a second. Is that refined lumber? I don't want that. Dookie. Why doesn't anyone want lumber, stone, or iron ingots? They just end up piling up after a while. There's even a flying turtle with old dudes on it that'll sell that stuff, but they won't buy it. But that's not the biggest problem this game has. No, no, there's something that makes it nigh unplayable. A true failure in game design. It made me hesitate putting this under my not good series. One of my islands, Stone Place, is a forest. Zero out of 10. What the heck, dev? How could you let this slide? But for real, the only other thing I can complain about is the UI, but I can sure complain about it. If you want to leave an island, you need to press the travel button in the lower right of the screen. The hotkey for travel is T, so if you press T, it takes you back to the map, right? No, it highlights travel, and then you need to press E to actually travel. Why is this a two-step process? It really doesn't need to be. Another one is whenever you need to move the mouse to an edge of the screen to select something, before your mouse gets to the menus, it'll start scrolling because you're on the edge of the map not taken up by the menu. It's even worse with anything at the bottom, trying to check journals or prices and the map kind of skirts a little bit and you sigh inside. You can't zoom the map out either, you have to use the arrow keys to navigate around to see where the heck you're trying to go. And the last one I got is about resource delivering. If you're looking at an island that you've bought and built stuff on, it'll say what materials it'll cost to upgrade each building. If you're looking at an island you have a quest on, it'll just say, deliver materials, or this one just says, build mailbox. If you open the journal, you can see what materials the regular delivery quest needs, but the mailbox one just says build mailboxes, so you need to physically go to the island to see what the heck you need to build a mailbox, and it could have all just been on the map screen. Okay, complaining over. This is a pretty simple game, and I'm not really sure I'm the target audience for it, but I think if you're looking for a chill trading game, this could be what you're looking for. The UI complaints are pretty nitpicky, and at $15, or your regional equivalent, for about 11 hours, I'd say it's worth it. You're always building and trading, and I never really felt like it was a huge, terrible grind. It is pretty cool to see an early access game grow up and become actually finished. Anyway, if you like this video, smash like, subscribe for more reviews, and if you like dumb video game songs, maybe you'll enjoy this Risk of Rain 2 rap I put out recently. That's all I got. Two lanes, out. Bird on my head, bird on my head. Jump so long that I'm flying instead. Bird on my head, bird on my head. Brain stock smart, two hops ahead. You know what I said, bird on my head. Bank full of coins, never in a red. Tri-tip stacker, enemies bled. Y'all don't even know about a bird on